Hi, I'm Trevor. Have you ever thought about how some things in life seem so simple, like circles, squares, the Mona Lisa? Well, in programming, um, a lot of stuff can be broken down into even smaller parts. Today we'll be learning about one of those smaller parts called variables. What variables are is something that we can use to store information on your computer. So you can save the value of a sensor, you can save letters, all sorts of stuff. And then you can access them later, look at them, you can write and change the value, you can read it. So the best analogy to really help you guys think about it is moving. You always pack up all your stuff in boxes and you'll write on the box what each box is. So you put all your kitchen stuff in one box, your books in another, and so on and so forth. So we can think of variables as being these boxes. So if we go ahead and create three boxes, we're going to label them A, B, and C. In box A, we store the number 1. In box B, we store the letter A. And in box C, we store the number 5. In programming, what these boxes really look like is this. These first words tell it what type of information will be stored in those boxes. Int stands for integer, which is just a positive or negative number without a decimal. So it's just like 1, 5, negative 100, stuff like that. Char stands for character. So it's just letters, numbers, symbols, all that, but rather than being like the number one if it's a number, it's the letter one. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with A. And again, we have another int. So the first tells it what type of information will be stored in our box. This is very important because not all information can be put in the same box. If you have like a really big item, you can't put it in a little tiny box. And so there's stuff like that that we do have to be aware of. So that's why we give it this type, so that way we know what fits in the box. The next part that we tell it is the name of the box. So for these ones we have a named A, B, and C. You can do longer names, you can do like Apple if you want, um, all sorts of stuff. It just has to be one word, you can't put spaces in there. You can do an underscore or something like that if you want, but you can't do spaces. It won't know what it is. Um, then the next part is you can tell it what's inside of the box. So we start out with A being equal to 1, B is equal to the letter A, and C is equal to 5. So now our program has created these three variables named a, b, and c that store the values 1, a, and 5. Um, later on, if we want to access it, you can just type a and it'll put the number 1 in. So if you're wanting to do some math, you can do like a plus c plus 3. And it would go through and do the math and it would give you the value 9. You can also do things where you can set them to other values. So now we can say a will now be equal to c plus 3, so it would change a to 8. So it would look something like that. So that's what we can do with variables. Now the reason that we use variables so much is there are many situations in which they're very useful. Let's say we want to read a sensor. Later on, you know, after a little bit of time, we want to check what the sensor value is. What we can do is we can read the sensor and save that into a variable. And then when we're at the point in our program where we want to check it, we can open up the box and see what our sensor read. And then if we need to do anything with it, we can put it back, and it's still there, and we can look at it again later. So that's why we could use variables in that situation. Another situation where we might want to use variables is let's say you had your robot that was driving around, and you wanted all of your driving to happen at the same speed. So you can go through and type your speed in at every single place. So let's say you had it moving at speed 50. But then you decided you wanted your robot to move a little bit slower, so you wanted to have it move at speed 20 instead. Well, if you had to go through and change that at every point in your program, and if you have a really long program, that could take a lot of time. So what you might be better off doing is creating a variable and using that, so rather than having to change it everywhere in your program, you just have to change one number, and you can change it from like 50, or in this case 5, to 2. And then your robot would be moving slower. So there's a lot of uses for variables in programming. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys learned a lot about variables and how to use them in your programs. If you have more questions, just leave a comment down below and we'll try to get back to you. Hope to see you guys next time.